Fall is finally here in the north. Though I'm sad to see summer go, I'm ready for the days to get shorter and to wake up to the first glassy freezes coating the forest and the muskeg. Fall is a time when we all get to slow down a bit and enjoy some rain and cozy weather. We get to begin thinking about how we want to spend our winter. It's one of my absolute favorite times of year because you can feel the change in yourself and the weather simultaneously. Thank you to Columbia Sportswear for sponsoring this video. It is so good to be back home. This time it's different though. Because I'm going at life here on my own, I have to forge a path for myself with confidence and the courage to do things alone. And it only makes sense that as the weather changes, I've been dreaming a lot about how this next cold season might change me. everybody we are on our way to a campsite it is officially fall here in the north and it's cooling down a lot but we just arrived back home last week and i'm trying to get reacclimated to all of this beautiful nature and like enjoy it um, take a break from organizing all of my stuff getting things kind of organized and ready for the winter so William and I are on a little trip right now to go camping and cooking and foraging. I think it's important to take breaks whenever you've been working really hard, but up here in the north, you know, weather can get pretty bad. It's been on and off rainy today and the temperatures have been going down a lot every single day. It's maybe a couple degrees colder than the last. So. Winter is very much approaching us, but that doesn't stop us from getting out here. Now that the Jeep is prepared for camping and cold weather and snow and all of that, we're going to be doing a lot of that while we are here this winter. Let's go see what's over here. never been here before <laughs> and I've lived here for a while now. I was gonna camp out in the back back country but then I remembered this camp spot and that I hadn't camped here yet and I was like well it's just as beautiful if not more beautiful with like this view and it's really nice and quiet I was like let's ju let's just go to the one like it's not about how rough it is to get to the place it's about the spot that you're going to if it's gonna be beautiful or not like that's what matters wow i need to snow camp here it's too good home for the night. I was able to do a pretty deep cleaning of the Jeep since I've been back so things are nice and organized. Everything that I don't really need in the Jeep I've taken out and we have a nice bed. William! Hey buddy! He's chewing on a stick. He loves stick chewing. It's starting to get a bit chilly out here so I think we should change into something warmer. Check out my new Columbia Sports Wear Omni Heat Infinity jacket, puffer jacket. It's so cute, y'all. And I also got on some Omni Heat Infinity boots. <laughs> A big part of being confident solo here in the outdoors is making sure that I have the right gear for each season. This winter, a lot like last, I will be doing a lot of fun stuff in the snow and in super cold weather. So I never let weather stop me from doing the things that I really wanna do. So Columbia Omni Heat Infinity is the most advanced thermal reflective technology. It has thousands of gold dots that reflect and retain body heat without sacrificing breathability. It's the gold standard in warmth. So the heat that you produce heats up the jacket, which then heats your body, which then heats the jacket, and so on and so on. So you just have an infinite loop of warmth. That's why this thing is gonna be so clutch this winter when it could potentially get into the negatives again. <laughs> Nothing can stop me from going outside this winter. 
no excuses. So if you're looking for a winter jacket, some winter pants or some winter boots or among some other winter warm things, check out columbia.com slash gold. Thanks Columbia. So I'm going to make some dinner now with some mushrooms that I foraged earlier. I didn't get as many mushrooms as I thought I was gonna get. It's still pretty early in the season, but this is how it went. All right, everyone, we have made it to a mushroom foraging place. It's a little cooler on this end of the island, so I'm bundled up, bundled up to go into the bush here. And we're gonna go see if we can get some hedgehogs, some chanterelles, and whatever other mushrooms we can find down there. Take William along, I got my foraging knife and my bear spray, most importantly. Yeah, I'm super excited. And then hopefully, hopefully we find mushrooms that we can cook with later. Ooh, I know this is edible. Hello, friend. Thank you. I don't know if you can see us, but this is edible. Chantrell. Key is to find a place where it's really moist and the water can run off into the ocean. That's where you find the best amount of mushrooms. I found one. It's a baby one, though. Baby hedgehog. <laughs> that one is not edible. Some bunch berries. <laughs> bunch berries. <laughs> Red huckleberries. Big ones. Well, it looks as if the, they're not super out yet. I give it like two more days and there, there's gonna be some big ones out here. Some blueberries. These are some nice fat blueberries too. Oh, that one was so good. Ooh, giant mushrooms. Come here, William. Look at these guys. That one I believe is not edible. Those are, but they look kind of old. Chantrelli ones. Don't wanna pick those ones. Yeah, here, here's a super old Chantrelle. Hmm, William's on the lookout for us, for animals, I think. Good boy. Oh, there's a mushroom hiding in there. What is it? It is, it's hiding. <laughs> I saw a bunch a second ago. <laughs> William's trying to make a bed over there. Oh, yeah, a whole bunch of them. That's a baby one. We should leave the baby. Super baby ones to go bigger. Wow! Oh, hedgehog! Sometimes you just have to take it from a different angle and you just find them. There's a bunch of baby ones over here. Don't really want to pick the ones that are still growing. I don't know if that's a thing with mushrooms, honestly. Like, if they grow bigger or not. Like, but they also, since it's gonna rain in the next couple of days, they're probably gonna rot out anyways. So, as long as you leave, leave a little bit of the stem, I believe they grow back, if I'm correct. <laughs> it was a beautiful tree of blueberries. Well, if we can't get mushrooms, we'll at least get a few blueberries to chomp on. It's the end of the, oop, it's the end of the season for blueberries. But these ones are big and ripe and beautiful. Thank you, blueberry tree. Thank you. <laughs> okay, down we go. Under and through. Oh. Oh. Okay, well, let's see if we could spot any last mushrooms. Well, yeah, I think it would have been better to go in a couple more days where it's been raining a little more. Might be in luck, y'all. Look at these ones here. Oh my god, it's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Look at these. They're kind of still in shape. Not edible. Enough, like, not bad. <laughs> these are angel wings. So pretty. Bloop, bloop. <laughs> bloop. So beautiful. My jacket is so sparkly compared to the skunk cabbage. <laughs> Sparkle party in the forest. I think I might have found another hedgie. Hi, hedgehog. 
Yep, there we go. William. He's been doing so good out here. I've been giving him more and more freedom. So this is our haul. Last time I came here with a friend and we got a lot. But we have a few we could put in our ramen tonight. So you guys might be like, Louie, how do you go out and do these things on your own and like do it without being scared? And most of the time I am actually kind of scared when I go mushroom foraging in the middle of basically nowhere in Alaska where there's a lot of wildlife and for sure bears out and stuff. And the way I do it is I just, I, you have to harness your in, inner confidence. Once you're prepared with your gear and your safety measures and you tell people where you're gonna go and stuff, then you just have to tap in to your inner confidence. And remember what the goal of your outside expedition or adventure is gonna be. And I think that's how I get through most of it, is just remembering that I am prepared, I do know what I'm doing, and lots of people go out and do stuff. And just because I'm a femme presenting person doesn't mean that I can't go and do those things as well on my own. So tap into your inner confidence because you are awesome. You can for sure get out and do the things that you've been wanting to do in nature. Granted, you just do your research and be prepared. That's all you can do. Back to cooking, Louie. So here's my little haul of goodies. <laughs> it's still early in the season for mushrooms, I believe, so it's kind of hit or miss. You never know what you're going to get. So I believe these are chanterelles here. I'm going to verify with friend before I eat them, but sometimes they have gills that look more like this. And so that I know for sure is edible. I believe it's the chanterelle. I could be wrong about the name. Um, but these look very similar. <laughs> and I'm not sure if the gills are, if that's right. So I'm going to definitely get those checked out. But I know for a fact that these are definitely hedgehogs because of the little spikies. They're really hard to miss. And the smaller ones have little holes in them like that. This is another hedgehog here. Come on, kid. This is another hedgehog right here. Beautiful. Last year, at that same spot, I was getting ones that were like this big. This year, not so much. We'll have to go a few more times. Here's another Sean Trill. Oh, drop it. No, you can't eat it. Well, you try to eat this one. Oh, he got a stick. Uh, here's another hedgehog that doesn't look so good. It looks past ripe, so we'll probably skip on that one. But we'll be able to put a couple hedgehogs, wash them, put them in the ramen. So it wasn't the best, but we'll go back again and see if after another rain spell and then a couple dry days, we'll go out there again. Some people, so on the bigger ones, some people take off the little stringy, pokey, hedgehoggy points. Um, but I leave them. Some people like them for texture. On the smaller ones, I leave them. On the bigger ones, usually I'll take them off. I really wish I got some bigger ones, but I'm just going to soak these in water for a little bit. And along with my berries and some water. And we're going to make some noodle soup because it's chilly out and make a fire and enjoy this beautiful spot that we are at. <laughs> I've been really liking going back to just using a little pocket stove to make meals because it's just so much simpler that way. The fuel canister lasts me a pretty good amount of time. Hard veggies. Our overripe hedgehogs. Just, just throw them for some. <laughs> some water. Well, we wait for our delicious soup to boil. I want to talk about another tip that is super 
important to know when you go camping alone where there's no service and you're out in nature and you're doing all sorts of stuff, make sure to always tell somebody where you're going. Like for example, I had told my mom what my itinerary was, my, what my general plan is. I always tell her if I don't get back by a certain time, make sure to send search and rescue. So <laughs> that is something that I have learned in my years of traveling alone as a female and I think everyone should do this even if you're in a group because um, it saves lives. <laughs> We're going to add in our wheat noodles. Ah, let me add in your wheat noodles. I've got some frozen corn that I had left over in my freezer, some bok choy and an egg. I always like to crack one of those in there. It's looking good. That'll cook from the heat. Oh, so good. Hey, this looks amazing. I like to add in some green onions and some red chili sauce to it as well. Mmm, so good. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. That was so good. William had his dinner too. <laughs> and now we're gonna just make a little fire. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna make a fire real quick out of the little wood bits that we have. I haven't quite gotten to the point where I'm cutting down logs and like quartering them and like, you know, using an ax yet. I will get there. Back in the day when I was a wee youngling, just learning how to camp on my own and really just in general, um, things just seemed really scary to me. I found even things like making a fire in a fire pit that's you know already here to establish was scary to me one thing i've learned through exploring and going on adventures and pushing myself is that things are generally not as scary as you think them to be i think that there's this general perception that <laughs> william come down then i think there's this general perception that Camping and being outdoors is super dangerous. And I really don't think it's that dangerous unless you aren't prepared. Probably safer outdoors than you are even in the city at this point. I mean, anything can happen. But the important thing is to not think of the things that could go wrong all the time. Obviously be prepared and make sure that you know what you're gonna do in the case that something bad happens. But definitely don't scare yourself. I think there's a lot of people out there who are fearful and when you tell them you want to go do something alone often they can project some of their fears onto you and so if going outdoors and camping like this or going super out in the back country is your thing I say give it a try don't let people stay really don't let people tell you one way or the other William is throwing a fit in the background while I get this fire going <laughs> I could probably cut this down even further if I wasn't so lazy right now. Forget everything you know about Bigfoot, aliens, scary stuff, folklore stories. You know, they're fun and I do believe some of that stuff to an extent. I think it's important when you're camping alone to not scare yourself with unnecessary things. Um, that is something I learned very quickly. Um, just be prepared. That's all for real life things like bears or bad weather or potential wildfires or getting sick while you're out camping. <laughs> um, those things are far more likely to happen than um, aliens arriving or even really people, bad people being around. Um, that's not as common as you would think. Just slowly building it up with sticks. Wow, okay, that actually took me an embarrassingly long amount of time. I'm out of practice. It's just, you can't burn fires really hardly anywhere in the lower 48 in the summer anymore, so. So it's unusual to be able to have a fire at this point. I think the last fire I had was maybe in April, and then after that, things just dry it out or I was fishing. I can't get the It's Corn song out of my head. Literally so annoying. I don't know y'all. I'm just super happy to be back in Alaska. Like now that I know that I'm going to be here more permanently, it feels really good and it feels like the stability and the settling in that I like have been craving for a while now. 
And that's not to say that I don't enjoy traveling and I don't enjoy going around via Jeep and doing all of that fun stuff, but I think I'm entering a stage in my life where I need to just be able to focus on things more in depth. And something I find that when you're on the road traveling all the time, trying to make videos, you can't necessarily focus on things in the same way. Like there's always a problem when I have to edit, upload. There's just, it's a lot of work, you know, definitely not complaining about it. It's fun. But at the end of the day, I think that in order for me to move forward in my art in my life and career and just in general I think that I just need something different for a little bit and I'm just gonna be spending this winter doing what we kind of did last winter and exploring and now that I have a jeep that's outfitted for snow we can send it up north we can go skiing snowboarding there's just some things that you can't really do when you're moving around all the time I can't really establish skills in the same way like I really want to practice my sewing and my watercoloring and my guitar playing things that are just really hard to fit into your schedule and I'm needing for my mental health even right now to just be able to settle into a routine and slow down and reflect on what this past you know eight months has been for me it's been a lot and there is sort of a dark side in a sense to traveling around all the time but then that's what breaks are for you know and I think it's important to listen to your flow you know some people I think can just do it forever and they're happy and some people like me need to be able to take breaks here and there and be able to reflect like I need that time it's hard to reflect when you're always moving and having new experiences which are great but I think in order for your new experiences to be more worth your while and for you to, full, to get the full depth of an experience you've had is to be able to reflect on it. So that is part of the reason why I'm slowing down here this winter, but super excited to take y'all along for my winter. It's very different not having my mom around for sure. We're gonna be, yeah, soloing it, solo femaleing it in AK. Uh, but I have a lot of really nice friends and I plan on making a lot of new friends here now that I'm in town more and yeah i think it's gonna be a good winter so hopefully we'll be able to do some fishing i really think the fishing season's kind of over the salmon have done their run but we might be able to get some winter kings or some winter trout at some point so i'm excited about that and yeah just settling in i'm going to show you all the process of me settling into like my first space that i've ever rented on my own that i've had to myself with no roommates that is a big change for me and so obviously that you have to find a balance between spending too much time alone and like taking advantage of this time alone so I'm really really excited about that and it's really nice to be back in this beautiful place every time I leave Alaska my heart aches for it that's just so beautiful here in its own way you know and I don't know if it's for everybody but for me this is this is it y'all this is this is the spot like I love it here so anyways we're just gonna chill out for the rest of the night and yeah I'll see y'all in the next video thanks for coming along with me for Jake and cooking let me know if you want me to do more of that the next thing I think we can possibly do is cranberry picking and make something out of cranberries which I think would be kind of cool Anyways, I love you guys. I'm so grateful for all the support that you all give me. And I will see you in the next one. Love you. Bye. Thank you to Columbia Sportswear for sponsoring this video. Columbia should make these for dogs. <laughs> William, it's heating your body. I'm going to be warm now. He's so ready to sleep. Interesting.